Your website copy is a lot more important than you realize, and it can make or break whether a customer reaches out to you for services or purchases a product. Now, changing around a few words or optimizing headlines can often result in drastic changes in business performance and in fact, three quarters of online users pay close attention to the spelling and grammar on a company's website. So how do you think your website copy reflects your brand? Is it generic and boring? Is it vague? Or does it bring out specific emotions and gets customers excited to buy your product? Now, don't worry if it sounds like the former, I'm gonna be showing you how to write effective website copy today. But let's step back. What is website copywriting? Now, it's the process of writing pages for a business website that helps achieve their goals and hit KPIs. Now, these might be organic traffic, sales or leads in most cases, if not a combination of all of these things. There are standard practices and pages that must be produced such as a home page, contact page and about page for example, and having SEO knowledge is also extremely important because it allows you to rank higher in Google and drive more traffic. For instance, I'm ranked number one for Toronto Copywriter for Hire because I've optimized my website for that term and it helps me generate inbound leads. How much should you pay or charge for website copywriting? The amount you pay for website copywriting will depend on several factors, including the writer's skill level, their portfolio, your budget, and the scope of the project. It also isn't one size fits all in terms of rates, because according to the Professional Writers of Canada Association, website copywriting is typically billed at $60 to $100 an hour, or $1 to $3 per word. Now, normally copywriting is billed hourly or per project. I wouldn't expect it to be per word, but you also want to look at it as an investment. If you spend $5,000 to get the website copy written and it generates five to six figures in business over the short or long term, clearly there is a great ROI there. So that's how you need to look at it as an investment. But next, let's talk about how to actually write website copy. Step one is to organize all available resources. So the first step I want you to do is to go and organize all of the things that you have access to that tell you about the business, the product, and their audience. So these include things like blog posts, reviews and testimonials, market reports, forums, looking at competitors, internal documents, such as branding or content guidelines, and social media conversations. All of these bring us to step number two, which is asking the important questions. With all this previous information in hand, let's first ask ourselves what the features and benefits of the product or service are. Now, I just covered this in my last video, so make sure to watch that to learn more. But for a quick summary, a product or service feature is a factual piece of information, while the benefits are the deeper rewards for using that product or service. And an example of this would be copywriting. The service itself, the feature would be getting copywritten for you, but the benefit would be increased sales. And that's what the client or customer is really after. Next, what's the unique value proposition? The unique value proposition, or UVP for short, is the feature that makes the product or service stand out from anything on the market. And let's look at Dyson's vacuum, for example. The headline below the product name clearly states that our product has twice the suction of any cord-free vacuum. I want you to study your own business or your client's business to determine what makes them stand out among every competitor. Better yet, you can actually ask them this on the phone or via email to get it straight from them. You should also ask, what problem does the product solve? And I'm sure you or your client's product or service has tons of nifty features and gizmos, but the reality is that only one thing matters, which is solving the customer's problem. Now in the Dyson example above, it's safe to say that the vacuum would solve problems like preventing allergies, keeping the customer's house clean, saving time versus using a less powerful vacuum, and not needing several products to clean all floor types. Pricing is also a huge reason why people buy things, so it needs to be within their budget, and they also have to be able to justify paying for it. So how much does the product cost and how much does it cost to maintain needs to be mapped out before you begin writing your copy, carefully break down why it costs the way it is, and once again, if you can position it as an investment, depending on the product or service, that can help with conversions. Now we're on to step three, which is studying the audience like the back of your hand. You really need to understand the audience like your best friend, and they're all different. They have different needs, values, desires, and beliefs, and understanding all these little details allow you to craft copy that hyper-targets them, their questions, emotions, and situations. So you should be asking things like, who is the average person visiting this page? Why do they need the product or service? What purpose does it serve them? What questions would they have? And what objections might arise in their mind? Now, with all the previous information you collected, you should be able to answer these. If you're writing copy for a client, you may want to present a questionnaire with these questions because they know their business best and they'll be able to answer them very easily. And you may also want to consider sending out a questionnaire through Google Forms or Typeform to the audience to also hear their input. Next, let's get into the fun stuff, which is actually writing the website copy, beginning with how to write a homepage. Now, a homepage is like a first impression. It sums up everything about you and influences the rest of the interactions with customers later. Now, homepage copy isn't one size fits all. 
an e-commerce store would have vastly different copy than a marketing agency or a mobile app site, for instance. However, there are some universal truths that every company should follow when writing their homepage. The first one being, what is it that you do and why does it matter? I want you to put this in the headline and above the fold because the above the fold section of a website is the first thing that someone sees. And if it's not that good, it might be the last thing too. And it's precisely why you need to have a very descriptive and benefit oriented headline placed in the hero section of the website, which is the above the fold area. So let's look at mine, for example. I have a main SEO keyword that explains my services, followed by a headline and a call to action. People don't land on my page thinking, what does this guy do again? And neither should they when they land on your website. So just quickly sum up what you do and what it means for the customer. The hero section is also a great place to put calls to action, buttons, and promotions. Secondly, live by the logo bar. This is really important for SaaS companies and service businesses. It acts as social proof and builds trust with customers. And I recommend including one right above the fold or just at least placed somewhere on the homepage at minimum. Now look how ClickFlow, the SEO tool, boasts about working with the Atlantic and Drip. It makes them authoritative, it helps people trust them, and those large brands aren't just gonna work with anybody. So it acts as social proof and shows that ClickFlow is able to meet the high standards of these companies. The third thing I want you to do is have one focus. Every page on a website needs to have a single goal, and this makes tracking analytics easier and just increases engagement, and it prevents people from becoming confused. There was a study that found the more options that you give someone, the less likely they are to take action. In my opinion, a homepage should do a few things. Normally it's gonna communicate a value proposition, the benefits of the product or service, it's gonna explain what those product or services are, and maybe cover the results through testimonials or case studies. Hello Bar is a prime example. Upon landing on their homepage, you can see that you can really only create a free account, that's it. It forces users down a very specific path and funnel. There's no chance of confusion and Hello Bar is able to guide everybody from discovery to conversion. Next, let's write the about page. Now here's a tough truth. Most people don't really care about your business, but more so care about what you can do for them. And the about page is a very ideal place to reflect this and it helps the customer understand why their hard earned money should be transferred from their pocket to yours. Now I want you to be personal, don't be so dry. Everyone tends to make the same mistake of just talking about their company, their leadership, their history, and it's pretty bland and predictable. So what I want you to do is show your face, talk about what you do and be personable. People wanna connect with other people, always remember that. And here's a cool example. This is Smashing Magazine's about page. It features blurbs about their guidelines, values and metrics, but most importantly, they have a cute graphic for every team member that links to their Twitter account. So this creates transparency and allows readers to directly connect with the people behind the business. Now let's move on to writing a product page. So if you sell physical or digital products, you need amazing sales copy if you really wanna drive a lot of sales. And the first step is to clearly define the features of the product, size, color, materials, dimensions, and so forth, and then elaborate on the benefits, the emotional, financial, or underlying reward. Shopify does this by stating its online store feature helps customers market their business, get ahead of competitors, and tailor product suggestions. They don't just say, hey, you're gonna get an online store. And the price also needs to be easy to find, and any discounts should be highlighted. Call to action buttons like buy now or add to cart should be obvious and easy to find. You can also split test the copy for these to find winning combinations. Now remember that 60% of customers rely on reviews to make purchases, so testimonials should be displayed on each product page to maximize conversions. Similarly, we can write a service page very closely to how we would a product page, but there are some distinct differences to be aware of. So the first step is to explain the service, how it's conducted, and how it's gonna transform into tangible results. The marketing agency WebFX does this on their digital recruitment service page. They first summarize how the service assists in creating perfect job listings and reshaping client recruiting campaigns. Revenue and lead numbers on the right assist the copy as proof and then how much they charge along with the list of deliverables is displayed so potential clients know exactly what they're getting out of it and how much it's going to cost. I also suggest including turnaround times and using multiple calls to action depending how long the page is. Last but not least, let's write a contact page. It's the simplest of all pages to write copy for, but don't be so hasty. Um, there's still some strategies and important things you need to know before you just slap on a contact page and move on. So firstly, the contact page should include a clear call to action. It might be email us, call us, contact us, and this will change depending on your business, but you wanna tell the customer what to do to increase engagement on that page. Now, additionally, you can also link to other resources that will help answer questions like FAQs, a help desk, or a blog post. Now you can see on Shopify's contact page, they also link to other resources. And so this is good after they've contacted you, they can continue learning about your brand. But that does sum up today's video on website copywriting. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you wanna see more copywriting videos. 
You can also contact me if you need copywriting services or visit my website to get free copywriting courses and other resources.